Okay, well today we're going to do an axle replacement on this 2000 Mazda Proje 5 speed. And the symptoms are it's making a lot of clicking and clacking noises in the front left when you turn. And then when you back up even in a straight line it makes some really nasty noises. And it's starting to actually make noise when you uh, just take off in a straight line going forward. So that means the axle, the outboard CV joint is just done on it. It's it's worn completely out. And it's funny because even on this one, it's the boot is still good. It's not lost any grease or it doesn't appear to have. So it's interesting how that happened. Uh, but anyway, we got our tools and supplies out here. We've got a jack and jack stand and board and tools and things we may need so uh, normally I do this on the concrete but it's kind of midday and we don't have any shade out there so we're going to do it back here we're just going to make sure we got plenty of uh, rice in there to keep the car from sinking so, so what we're going to do first is we're going to uh, pull off that hook cap right there Okay then, with the hubcap off and the wheel still on the ground, the car's weight on the wheel, we want to loosen this spindle nut right here. And it's a 32 millimeter. And I'll show you in a second the tool and the arrangement I used to do that, but it's a 32. And I always try to use a half inch uh, socket drive on that. It's got a lot of torque on it, and you break a 3 8 probably. So normally, if these axles have never been out, here at the end of the spindle, you see that little, uh, looks like a keyway. Normally that nut there should have a part of that bent down into there to keep it from turning off accidentally, even though these are torqued down to about 200 foot-pounds of torque. But anyway, if it had that in place, you need to take a small chisel or something and bend that back out so the nut will be free to turn. And then we're going to uh, get that thing loosened up. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our 17 millimeter socket and we're going to loosen the lug nuts but not remove them. We want to do all that because, uh, yeah, that's what I say. All the uh, stuff tends to turn with the wheel off the ground, obviously, so let's do that now. I'll be right back. Let's try it again. Yeah, so evidently this car has two different size lug bolts on it, front to rear. That's not a surprise either. But these are 21.
Okay, next time we get those jacket car up. Okay, I always try to jack these up pretty high because this transmission has oil in it and we'll try to keep the oil leakage to a minimum so we can get a solid board there. This under the frame. Okay then, once this wheel's off, we're going to need to probably go ahead and remove this splice shield. These are all uh, 10 millimeter bolts here, here, and you got one up there, and looks like one up there. I guess that's one bolt. No, it's not a bolt. one right there. I'm sorry for the camera shaking there. But anyway, find all your bolts and go ahead and find all your bolts and go ahead and take this spy shield off. Okay, since we got that spy shield off for next order of businesses, we're going to need to get under and there's a pinch bolt. It's called a pinch bolt right under this. Uh, right here it is. It holds this bottom ball joint in on these. It's a 14 millimeter on each end. The head of the bolt is over here where I have my wrench put on, and you can just use the socket and undo the the uh, other side of it and just take it out, and that's what separates your ball joint, lower ball joint, from the the hub and the spindle and whatever you want to call it here, because this thing needs to come down. Because this whole this whole axle hub assembly, um, we're probably going to end up taking these out of the strut too because we want to get this thing to come out and come over because you have to do that to pull this axle through there. That's the way that works. So uh, anyway, so let's get going on that and I'll pick back up in just a second. Okay, progress report. Uh, did some more disassemblage. I took these two 17 millimeter bolts out of the top right here and uh, got that pulled loose. And what I ended up having to do is get this ball joint completely off right here separate off the spindle was I had to come in with my screwdriver and kind of pry that open a little bit there's a slot in there it's just like I said it's just it's called a pinch bolt when you put the bolt and nut in it pinches it down and as you can see it's got a it's got a I know that sounds well that's kind of not too good but you see right here it has a scallop place right there and what happens is when you put that thing together and you get the bolt in there then the bolt sits come on 
the bolt sits in there roughly like that and it can't pop out so as long as you have it tight so where we're at right now is i'm just loosening this nut the rest of the way up so i can pull this axle through it's looks like it's already ready about to fall apart anyway this thing felt loose in there so i hope i don't have to have a bearing put in here because i've been getting some noise up here i'm hoping it's all this axle because i'll show you i saw where this axle is actually leaking its grease out at and i'll show you that when i get it out so all right let's continue all right well just for caution's sake uh just once i got this axle pushed through here sufficiently I went ahead and got myself my one of my bungees and ran around and just to hold this assemblage, this, this spindle and hub and all that up so it's not pulling the hell out of the brake line. It is a little bit already, but we'll try to avoid that any more than possible. So the axle's loose now, so I can just basically I hope it's showing up. Basically as if this out of the way and over hopefully there we go just gonna let that kind of sit on that sit on it <laughs> and okay yeah yeah I can see where the see where the axle looks like it was leaking actually it's got a clamp here Looks like the clamp is not doing its thing too well. Probably freak the grease out of it. So now then, well, all we got left is to pop out that axle in there. I'm going to use my large. Whichever one I can fit under here, I'm going to use the largest one. I'm going to use my big pry bar and get in that joint right there. And right there, you see my finger? Right in there. And we're going to pry this thing out. Now, as I mentioned early in the video, at the beginning, that these axles, normally the only remands you can get now have an ABS ring made onto them. Even if your car does not have ABS, such as this car, this car does not have ABS, these work fine. You can use them interchangeably. So don't worry about that. Don't stress out. And just use this one because you probably won't find one that's uh, not got it like this one. Doesn't make any difference. Now here's another note I'm going to re-inform you of here is when you're working on this, don't take both axles out at the same time because if you do that the differential can fall apart <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous but it's true so just do one side at a time here <laughs> and you should be fine well when doing any axle replacement job this is my favorite scene of all of it is when I have the new axle back in and ready to put back together and this is pretty painless as far as axles go I just worked around with my these uh, these are my long pry bars I got those at I got those at Harbor Freight it's called the heavy duty pry bar set four piece pry bar set and these things are indispensable when you're doing things like this uh, I've got four different sizes of them and you wouldn't believe how much usage you get out of those. You can't, you just about can't do it. You, you'll never get, unless the stars shine on you like no other, you'll never get this out with a screwdriver. So you can either use one of these, you can use a crowbar, but just be cognizant of where you're prying under here. You have an aluminum transmission case. You don't want to go wailing on it. If you weigh 250 pounds, you don't want to put all that weight in there because you might crack the transmission and then you're fudged. So, anyway, this is ready to go back together. What I did was, I know people, including myself, are always slightly paranoid about getting the axle all the way back in the transmission, because uh, it's got a little clip on it. I didn't show you that, but they always do. You'll know it when you see it, that holds it in. So what I do is I put this thing in, and then 
I have my brass hammer, which I also get a lot of use out of, because brass does not mar up steel, unless you're really good at that. <laughs> but what I do is I put this thing in and I get it lined up like this and hold it with my one hand and then I take my uh, brass hammer and I just whack the end of this thing squarely several good times to make sure it's in and then I can come back here and I can pull on it and I can hear it back there it's in so it's clicked in some of them really fight you some don't but so this is just going to be essentially put back together uh, in the opposite order that it went. I'm going to show you something I'm going to do here though, especially you folks up north need to do this. So stay tuned. Okay, here's a suggestion for these little, these are the splines out here that go into the, right here, into this hub. and. Down here in the south, we don't ever have problems with that because we don't get exposed to road salt, but you folks up in the north do, and so as you're well aware, and I'm well aware from that car there, anything gets in contact with any road salt rusts badly, so uh, this car probably won't outlast this axle. <laughs> I hope not. I mean, I hope I don't have to replace another axle anytime soon, but uh, what I'm going to do just and especially you guys up there. I would get some of this. This is my can of uh, simply anti-seize. Really like this stuff. And just get some out here and daub on here. You don't have to go nuts with it, but just get a get the help. I showed it, wouldn't it? I'm bad about that. I don't know what it is with me. Sometimes I'm, I start looking at other stuff and not in the viewfinder but anyway just go around it right there and that'll disperse it out when you put this thing in and that should keep you from having to uh, beat hell out of the axle if you ever take it back out again from it being seized in there in fact it is probably put some on these lugs too I see there's a little bit of rustage on there and there's kind of a debate I guess some people say you don't want to put anti-seize on it some people say you could because it has probably has some lubricating properties also but I don't see a problem with it as long as you torque your lugs down and plus if you go back to the video that I made about three years ago three or four years ago whenever it was said I win the idiot of the year award it's because I put a I put my red Mazda I had back then I put it back together after doing a wheel bearing and didn't tighten the lugs up far enough and they make a distinct sound when that happens you step on the gas and they go blah, 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 blah. so all right we're going to put this back together and um, I did not lose any fluid out of this transmission that probably means I need to check the fluid in this transmission but this takes this is a manual and it takes gear oil it takes 75 it takes GL4 75 slash 90 gear oil year round so you know optimally they say drain it and fill it but I'm not going to do that but I will check it so I'm going to put this back together and just reverse it there's nothing scientific about this at all I uh, may show you how I put this ball joint back together that might be worth showing so if so you'll see that if not we're going to get it back together and move on to something else and that something else is specifically that broken motor mount over there that's yeah, pretty bad so we're doing that next oops you didn't hear that I hope well anyway this is literally three minutes later and this thing essentially just fell back together the axles through the ball joint has sit back down where it's supposed to be completely and I've got the the spindle hub assembly back in the, the shock there the strut I'm sorry and just ready to put those bolts in and put the bolt back in the bolt nut back on the ball joint tighten the be you know what out of that and then we'll start our nut here but we won't tighten this to get it back on the ground because it has to be tight 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 and I'll give you that torque value when we get back down on the ground 
Okay, so it's time to torque that axle nut back down. I've got the wheel on and sitting back down on its wheel. So let's do that now. The spec is between 175 and 235 foot pounds of torque. So let's do that. Okay, like that. Okay, last thing is to get all these tools up and take it for a drive and make sure everything's good. Thanks for watching, guys.